Well, welcome to this edition of Market Insights, and we're going to call this one Dumping 2021. This will be the last uh, edition here. It is December the 15th that I'm recording this, and so let's get going. As you can see, there's a nice little pretty snow snowman out there, and we had quite a bit of snow up here yesterday. So the first thing we want to talk about is market anchors. We're going to get to that, the tail of the two oil seeds. And will these negative margins last? So you have to stay tuned to uh, learn more. Anyway, so the market's thoughts are, from what we saw in 2021, was the market started off as an inflationary bull market, and I think we've discussed that in previous episodes. But it quickly deteriorated into an explosive drought market, and it was fueled by zero precipitation and record-breaking heat. You know, we all lived through this last year, and it was crazy. And that's all we can really say about it. Uh, it was actually the perfect storm, and it just caused havoc throughout the whole system, the ag system anyways, up here in Canada. And it led many people to uh, ruin. And it's not just farmers that had to suffer with this, right? So that's an important thing to remember. As we end this year, though, we want to look about where these markets are and where they might go. So in this edition, I'm just going to be looking at two charts because part of the nature of the market insights is to keep it relatively short. And we're going to look at wheat and the other is canola. So let's get going on that. Um, and why are these charts important? It's because they tell a story. And that story is of price. And we want to know is how did we get here and where are we going? And especially for you farmers out there, you really want to know where are you going? And uh, right now, at this particular far time, many farmers are really bulled up or gun-shy of pre-booking their grain. And that's very easy to understand right now why that is, right? Um, so we can take an uh, objective look at the current situation, use some of these charts that we have available to us, and see what kind of story and what kind of pieces we can start putting together for the 2022 crop that's coming going to be here sooner than we think. So the first chart we want to look at is the tail of the two wheats. As you can see from January 1st, 2021, till December 5th, 10th, sorry, um, Kansas is up 30, Seabot is up 22, and Old Spring Wheat, which would be a hard red wheat, is up 67%. And as you can see, right around the end of May, that is when the two are the the wheats took a big divergence, especially the mini uh, the mini wheat, which is the spring wheat that started to go make a bigger, wider and wider gap in between the other two wheats, and that's important to remember. So let's we'll zoom in here a little bit more. So as you can see, the green line is the spring wheat, and that would be your hard red wheat or some of your dark northern wheat, I believe, down in the states. And that's where we had the big problem in growing the crop. And now we have extremely high proteins, but extremely low yields, right? So why does this ma matter? Like I said before, this is where that the wheat started to diverge from each other, and that was because of the drought fueled the whole thing. So that's important to remember that we are still in a drought market, right? Um, we did, you know, we I think we saw a La Nino forming, and when it did hit, the whole thing just took off, right? So obviously the market reacted. It did what the markets are supposed to do. Of course, it was fueled by other things in the outside of the market, right? So we had a low production of high protein milling wheat is basically what we had. But what is this chart telling us? Um, it's telling us, one, that there was a shortage of that good quality milling wheat, the hard red wheat. And that was caused by a drought. And that's very important to remember how droughts affect the markets, right? It's a short-term gain. Um, but at the same time, all wheat classes have enjoyed a substantial run since 2021, since January, right? They all went up around over 20%. So that was important. That's important to remember, too. It's not just a drought. We also have other factors pushing it, right? So that means once the drought is alleviated... How, far lo how low does this market drop? Um, so the probability of milling wheat returning to its traditional spread, 
And the tradition, I put in quotes, because we don't quite know where that is now because we're hit an inflationary market. Um, once the drought is over, it's going to return back to where it's supposed to be, right? And we're, that's almost 100% guaranteed that's going to happen. So this means at some point, once the drought starts is alleviated, we don't know if it's this year, maybe it's not this year, we don't know. Um, the spring wheat will either drop faster or climb slower than the Kansas wheat or Seabot wheat. And what will happen is that big gap that we saw between the green line and the, I think it was the red line, um, will narrow in. And so what this really means is that as a farmer here in Canada, looking at growing some wheat for 2022, it's probably more prudent to be looking at hard red opportunities than CPS opportunities. And that's just throwing that out there for guys who are thinking about pre-pricing, right? So that's kind of the only thing I want to talk about wheat, not super detailed on this right now. Uh, we can go into that in some other time. So the next chart we want to talk about is canola. I know canola right now is a golden child right now in Canadian prairies. If you had it, it's incredible the price run it had. Uh, we're up to, I think it was over 22 some odd dollars and change right now as of like this thing from memory. And uh, so the green line there would be soybean oil. The red line is soybeans and the blue line is canola. So if you look at this, this paints a really interesting picture. As you can see, soybeans have actually dropped in value since the beginning of the year. It's actually down 7% on the year. And so canola has actually risen 50% on the year, right? So that's important, but the soya bean oil has only risen 30%, and that's also come off its highs that we've seen. So what the main story here is, is that the soybean oil complex, the vegetable oil complex, is actually not nearly as strong as the canola oil, or the, or the canola complex. So that tells us the story that canola is mainly driven by the drought um, situation that we had in 2021. And we can easily see that because near the end of June, early July, when it started to get into dry, you can see that big massive spike up there and the market just never really looked back on the canola. So what this really means, we're just going to zoom in here again, is that once the drought is alleviated, something's got to give. And it's probably not going to be the soybean market and it's probably not going to be a soybean oil market. It's probably going to be the, one of the highest priced oil seed markets, which is canola. That's going to get pulled down in response to ha actually having some supplies. So what now, this $22, and I know lots of guys are looking for $25, if not more. Is it going to achieve that? That's the million dollar question right now. And we're probably not going to, we're, we don't have time to go into that kind of conversation right now. But... What we're saying here is once the supplies start to rebuild, which are going to take a while on canola for sure, that price spread is going to narrow right in back to where it should be. That's exactly what's going to happen on with wheat once our drought is alleviated. So we don't know if this drought is going to be alleviated this year or next year or what. Sometimes these La Niñas go back to back. So what that chart really showed us was it really revealed something really, really important. And as a farmer looking down the pipes here for the next 2022 crop, and you see that actually soybeans are down in price on the year, canola is up on the price on the year, knowing how big the soybean market is and how small the canola market relatively is, something's got to give. You just know that as you're looking into this pre-pricing situation scenario that's coming down the pipes. So when there's any whiff of new crop canola production, we're pretty confident that the canola market's going to drop. Um, it's just kind of the nature of the beast, right? So, like I said before, that spread between canola and soybeans is mainly attributed to that Canadian drought. I mean, we know farmers in Saskatchewan and even in Alberta that we're getting like two bushels an acre on canola. Big problems, right? So, so... We all hear lots of things about the vet soy oil complex and it's extremely strong. And yes, it has been extremely strong and it does affect canola quite 
heavily the soy oil because um, canola is getting closer to that 50% uh, veg oil in it, right? So that's going to support the canola, but at the same time, the soy oil has come off its highs, which were closer to that 70 cents or so, and now it's down to 50 cents. So it's lost a significant amount, right? And if we look over the longer term averages, the last five, six years, it was hovering around that 35 cents. So we don't quite know where it's going to level off right now. But one thing's for certain, $23, $24 canola, is that going to happen even when we see soybeans dropping, we see soy oil dropped? What is really going to happen here, right? That's the big question you guys got to ask yourselves, right? So what I'm trying to say here in, in reality is canola is not really a crop we want to be messing around with anymore. Um, in my personal opinion, we've switched a little bit out of the whole cautious bull market and switch more into the neutral market on the canola right now. And what we're going to be seeing on this canola market here is the soybeans will act as an anchor to it, therefore limiting the canola upside. That doesn't mean canola cannot go higher. What it does mean is if it does go higher, it's going to go kicking and screaming. If the soybean complex goes higher, well, then canola is obviously going higher also. So that's this kind of keeping a tether on, on the canola market. And that's just something we've really got to pay attention to because nobody really cares about Canada, right? So here's some other charts I have. Um, I'm going to explain these in the Grain Navigator uh, when I write that, uh, probably tomorrow or the next day for sure. Um, as you can see, so if you've subscribed to the Grain Navigator, I've talked to that about in previous issues. You just click the link. It's going to be at the end of this video. Click it, sign up. It's a great program. We're going to talk a little bit about these calculated canola crush margins and canola soy uh, crush margins. And if you look at the crush margins here on the canola and the soy crush, there's a no-brainer what's going on. If you are a company crushing canola and you have the opportunity to crush soybeans, you'd be crazy to be crushing canola right now. That's what this chart says. Now, this is calculated crush. We don't know the real margins, but this is math. So in one year, you've gone down 236% on your crush margins on canola. On the soy, you've gone up 65%. You tell me what you're going to do. And again, we've gone on this canola, calculated canola crush margin on the blue line on the right there. Um, it started off around $95 at the beginning of the year. Now we're down to negative $133. These are important numbers to understand, guys. We just can't be looking out our window on the farms and saying, my bins are empty and canola's going to $500 a bushel. It's not going to happen. We have to look at what is happening to the people who are using this product. If they're losing big money, at some point, they're going to say, you know what, I'm out. I'm going to do something else. And that's a very important number to be paying attention here. So what you guys all really need to do is sign up for the Grain Navigator, or better yet, you guys go into my website, probably even want to sign up for the Market Defender. The conversations that I have with these farmers are invaluable. So let's continue on. We all know the disclaimer that I've said a million times before. So obviously, the opinions are expressed by me, personal judgment from doing research and stuff like that. I don't know how the market's going to play out, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so what I want you guys all to do is upgrade your grain marketing. is a great Christmas present for yourself. Um, maybe even somebody else needs this product. You just scan that QR code with your phone or you click the link um, and let's do this. And I do have other products available. And uh, let's uh, go ahead into 2022 and make a, make a profitable year for ourselves. So with that, that's all I have for this 2021 Market Insights, and we can be expecting to see them every other week or so as it comes down the pipes. So you guys have yourself a great Christmas. If I don't talk to you from then, from now, I guess, to then, and we'll talk to you for sure in New Year, and have a good one, guys.